Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to Shravanam Diaries podcast. I'm your host Sula Lita Devidasi and we're continuing to read The Science of Self-Realization by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Chapter 1, Learning the Science of the Self. This section is called Reincarnation and Beyond. Okay, introduction. In August of 1976, Srila Prabhupada spent a few weeks at Bhaktivedanta Manor, 15 miles north of London. During that time, Mike Robinson of London Broadcasting Company interviewed him in his quarters. In their conversation, which was broadcast shortly afterward, Srila Prabhupada revealed that Krishna consciousness is not, in quotes, not some ritualistic ceremony of I believe you believe, unquote, but a profound, profound philosophical system in which the science of reincarnation is explained clearly and concisely. Mike Robinson Can you tell me what you believe, what the philosophy of the Hare Krishna movement is? Srila Prabhupada Yes. Krishna consciousness is not a question of belief. It is a science. The first step is to know the difference between a living body and a dead body. What is the difference? The difference is that when someone dies, the spirit soul or the living force leaves the body, and therefore the body is called dead. So there are two things, one this body and the other the living force within the body. We speak of the living force within the body. That is the difference between the science of Krishna Consciousness, which is spiritual, and ordinary material science. As such, in the beginning, it is very, very difficult for an ordinary man to appreciate our movement. One must first understand that he is a soul or something other than his body. Mike Robinson And when will we understand that? Srila Prabhupada You can understand at any moment, but it requires a little intelligence. For example, as a child grows, he becomes a boy. The boy becomes a young man, the young man becomes an adult, and the adult becomes an old man. Throughout all this time, although his body is changing from a child to an old man, he still feels himself to be the same person, with the same identity. Just see, the body is changing, but the occupier of the body, the soul, is remaining the same. So we should logically conclude that when our present body dies, we get another body. This is called transmigration of the soul. Mike Robinson So when people die, is it just the physical body that dies? Srila Prabhupada Yes, that is explained very elaborately in the Bhagavad Gita 2.20 Najayate mriyate va kadachin nahanyate hanyamane sharire Mike Robinson Do you often quote references? Srila Prabhupada Yes, we quote many references. Krishna consciousness is a serious education, not an ordinary religion. To a devotee find that verse in the Bhagavad Gita. Disciple Najayate mriyate va kadachin na yam bhutva bhavita vana bhuyah 
Ajo nitya shashvato yam purano nahanyate hanyamane sharire. Bhagavad Gita 2.20. Quote For the soul, there is never birth nor death. He does not come into being, will not come into being, and did not come into being. He is unborn, eternal, ever existing, undying, and primeval. He is not slain when the body is slain. Unquote. Mike Robinson. Thank you very much for reading that. So, can you explain to me just a bit more if the soul is undying does everybody's soul go to be with god when they die Shila Prabhupada, not necessarily if one is qualified if he qualifies himself to this in this life to go back home back to godhead then he can go if he does not qualify himself, then he gets another material body. And there are 8,400,000 different bodily forms. According to his desires and karma, the laws of nature give him a suitable body. It is just like when a man contracts some disease and then develops that disease. Is that difficult to understand? Mike Robinson, it's very difficult to understand all of it. Shri Prabhupada, suppose somebody has contracted smallpox. So after seven days, he develops the, sim the symptoms. What is that period called? Mike Robinson, incubation, Shla Prabhupada, incubation, so you cannot avoid it. If you have contracted some disease, it will develop by nature's law. Similarly, during this life, you associate with various modes of material nature, and that association will decide what kind of body you are going to get in the next life. This is strictly under the laws of nature. Everyone is controlled by the laws of nature. They're completely dependent. But out of ignorance, people think that they are free. They're not free. They're imagining that they're free but they are completely under the laws of nature. So, your next birth will be decided according to your activities, sinful or pious as the case may be. Mike Robinson, uh, your grace, could you go back over that just for a minute? You said that nobody is free. Are you saying that if we live a good life, we in some way determine a good future for ourselves? Srila Prabhupada, yes. Mike Robinson, so we are free to choose what we believe to be important. Religion is important because if we believe in God and lead a good life, Srila Prabhupada, it is not a question of belief. It is not a question of belief. Do not bring in this question of belief. It is law. For instance, there is government. You may believe or may not believe. But if you break the law, you will be punished by the government. Similarly, whether you believe or don't believe, there is a God. If you don't believe in God and you independently do whatever you like, then you'll be punished by the laws of nature. Mike Robinson 
I see. Does it matter what religion you believe? Would it matter if one was a devotee of Krishna? Srila Prabhupada It is not a question of religion. It is a question of science. Mm -hmm. You are a spiritual being, but because you are materially conditioned, you are under the laws of material nature. So you may believe in the Christian God, Christian religion, and I may believe in the Hindu, Hindu religion. But that does not mean that you are going to become an old man and I am not. We're talking of the science of growing old. This is natural law. It's not that because you are Christian you are becoming old and because I am Hindu I am not becoming old. Everyone is becoming old. So similarly all the laws of nature are applicable to everyone. Whether you believe this religion or that religion, it doesn't matter. Mike Robinson So you're saying that there is only one God controlling all of us? Srila Prabhupada There's one God and one nature's law and we are all under that nature's law. We are controlled by the Supreme. So if we think that we are free or that we can do anything we like, that is our foolishness. Hmm. One moment. Mike Robinson, I see. Can you explain to me what difference it makes being a member of the Hare Krishna movement? Srila Prabhupada The Hare Krishna movement is meant for those who are serious about understanding the science. There's no question of our being some sectarian group. No. Anyone can join. Students in college can be admitted. You may be a Christian, you may be a Hindu, you may be a Mohammedan, it doesn't matter. The Krishna Consciousness Movement admits anyone who wants to understand the science of God. Mike Robinson And what difference would it make to someone being taught how to be a Hare Krishna person? Hare Krishna person. Srila Prabhupada, his real education would begin. The first thing is to understand that you are a spirit soul. And because you are a spirit soul, you are changing your body. This is the ABC of spiritual understanding. So when your body is finished, annihilated, you are not finished. You get another body, just as you may change your coat and shirt. If you come to see me tomorrow wearing a different shirt and a different coat, does that mean you are a different person? No. Similarly, each time you die, you change bodies, but you, the spirit soul within the body, remain the same. This point has to be understood, then one can make further progress in the science of Krishna Consciousness. Mike Robinson, I am beginning to understand, but what I am finding difficult is how this ties in with the large numbers of your people we see handing out Hare Krishna literature on Oxford Street. Srila Prabhupada. This literature is meant to convince people about the need for spiritual life. Mike Robinson. And you're really not concerned whether or not they join 
the Hare Krishna movement, Srila Prabhupada, it doesn't matter. Our mission is to educate them. People are in ignorance. They are living in a fool's paradise, thinking that when their body is finished, everything is finished. That is foolishness. Mike Robinson. And you are basically just concerned to tell them that there is a spiritual dimension to life? Srila Prabhupada. Our first concern is to tell you that you are not this body. That the body is your covering, your shirt and coat, and that within the body you are living. Mike Robinson. Yes, I think I've got that now. If we could go on from there. You said that how you lived made a difference in your life after death. That there are natural laws that determine your next life. How does the process of transmigration work? Srila Prabhupada. The process is very subtle. The spirit soul is invisible to our material eyes. It is atomic in size. After the destruction of the gross body, which is made up of the senses, blood, bone, fat and so on, the subtle body of mind, intelligence and ego goes on working. So at the time of death, this subtle body carries the small spirit soul to another gross body. The process is just like air carrying a fragrance. Nobody can see where this rose fragrance is coming from, but we know that it is being carried by the air. You cannot see how, but it is being done. Similarly, the process of transmigration of the soul is very subtle. According to the condition of the mind at the time of death, the minute spirit soul enters into the womb of a particular mother through the semen of a father, and then the soul develops a particular type of body given by the mother. It may be a human being, it may be a cat or a dog or anything. Mike Robinson Are you saying that we were something else before this life? Srila Prabhupada Yes. Mike Robinson And we keep coming back as something else the next life? Srila Prabhupada Yes, because you are eternal. According to your work, you are simply changing bodies. Therefore, you should want to know how to stop this business, how you can remain in your original spiritual body. This is Krishna Consciousness. Mike Robinson I see. So if I become Krishna Conscious, I wouldn't risk coming back as a dog? Srila Prabhupada, no. To a devotee, find this verse. Janma karma chame divyam. Bhagavad Gita 4.9 Disciple Janma karma chame divyam evam yoveti tattvataha tyaktva deham punar janma naitimam eti sorjuna Quote One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not, upon leaving the body, take his birth again in the material world, but attains my eternal abode, O Arjuna. Srila Prabhupada God is saying, anyone who understands me is free from birth and death. But one cannot understand God by materialistic speculation. That is not possible. 
one must first come to the spiritual platform. Then he gets the intelligence required to understand God. And when he understands God, he does not get any more material bodies. He goes back home, back to Godhead. He lives eternally, no more change of body. Mike Robinson, I see. Now you've read twice from your scriptures. Where do these scriptures come from? Can you briefly explain that? Srila Prabhupada, our scriptures are coming from the Vedic literature, which has existed from the beginning of creation. Whenever there is some new material creation, like this microphone, for instance, there is also some literature explaining how to deal with it. Isn't that so? Mike Robinson, yes, that's right, there is. Srila Prabhupada. And that literature comes along, along with the creation of the microphone. Mike Robinson, that's right, yes. Srila Prabhupada. So, similarly, the Vedic literature comes along with the cosmic creation to explain how to deal with it. How to deal with it. Mike Robinson. I see. So these scriptures have been in existence since the beginning of creation. Now, if we could move on to something I believe you feel very strongly about. What is the main difference between Krishna consciousness and the other Eastern disciplines being taught in the West? Srila Prabhupada the difference is that we are following the original literature and they are manufacturing their own literature. That is the difference. When there is some question on spiritual matters, you must consult the original literature, not some literature issued by a bogus man. Hare Krishna, we're going to stop here for today. Thank you for tuning in. The link to this book is in the description. Check out our website, please. Please check out our website, shravanamdiaries.com. You will find the links to this book, the timeline of our episodes, all the books we've read so far, the biography of His Divine Grace, and interesting articles. So check that out, and we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.